So welcome to the last presentation of the day and of the conference. Now, after that, we'll just have a closing note and the party. Everyone's ready for the party. Um, and tomorrow, um, I hope you all come into the code sprint to tackle a couple of issues, those pesky issues in those modules. Uh, welcome to my presentation, Accessibility in the WYSIWYG Editors. Uh, so we have um, accessibility is always sort of the last thing on the list. It's a last presentation of the day as well, but it's very important. Um, hello, my name is Jana. Um, I'm a, so a software engineer from Tomato Elephant Studio. Uh, here's my Drupal.org profile. Um, I've been presenting here and there on the meetups and um, on Drupal South, trying to, um, when I build my presentation, I try to find out something new and maybe solve a couple of problems along the way. Who is this presentation for? So it's presentation for everyone, for project managers, project owners, designers, developers, and testers. Um, and on the agenda, uh, we've got, um, Web, what is web accessibility? Uh, what's uh, accessibility for WYSIWYG editors? Um, the CK Editor 5 and accessibility, as um, CK Editor 5 is now default um, editor for Drupal 10. Drupal 10, CK Editor, and accessibility. And we'll go through accessibility by design checklist. Uh, so what is accessibility on the web development? So it's just enabling users all from different walks of life and abilities um, to use, to be able to use our products, our services. Why is it important? You need to give um, all, everyone equal access to your services and to your products. It's, uh, it creates a better user experience. It creates a better discoverability of your content for search engine optimization. And also, it's a legislative requirement. So in Australia and New Zealand, for example, in New Zealand, the guidelines go, every web page must meet CAG 2.1 at level 2 uh, AA, subject to a few exceptions. And must, they defined as indicates an absolute requirement. <laughs> so they're pretty strict in New Zealand. Um, so there are a couple of standards were developed during over the um, the years um, um, from the Web Accessibility Initiative, from Web uh, Consortium, and mostly um, the minimum level, especially if you're working in the government environment, it's um, uh, guidelines 2.1 at AA level. There's lots of lots of resources of what exactly that includes. And the accessibility laws are enforced sometimes uh, in uh, United States more than in Australia and New Zealand. I haven't found any uh, litigations in New Zealand, but in Australia there were a couple of interesting cases. One, um, especially for the Sydney organizing committee for the Olympic Games, um, and the case was the beautiful website just had a lot of images that didn't have alternative text. So um, users couldn't use the website. Um, and the other one was very interesting as well. So the um, person manage versus calls. So the lady had an issue. Um, so uh, she was um, blind and um, she was uh, using the website and actually contacting calls saying, hey, you need to improve your services. And they, since like 2008, and they did improve in 2010, they released a new website. She was quite happy, they could use the website. And in 2013, they released a new version of the website that was unusable for the users <laughs> with special needs. So she was like, well, now you, um, so they went from litigation and it was settled privately and calls obviously improved their website. So um, yes, just don't go back on <laughs> accessibility. 
So, in this presentation, we'll focus on uh, accessibility of um, WYSIWYG editors and how the guidelines actually applied to, um, to the editor itself. So, it, editor is a form with a bunch of buttons of how you can format your text. In the short, it's a work in progress. Some WYSIWYG editors are better, some are worse. But first, let's look at uh, what actually, which guidelines uh, we can apply to the WYSIWYG editors. So it's use of color, alternative text alternatives. Um, it's making sure that if something is available by hover, it's also available if you focus on it with keyboard. Um, it's operable, so you can use keyboard to uh, create your content that you don't need to use the mouse alone. Um, it's understandable, so if you go to uh, your WYSIWYG editor on this particular page or this content type, the buttons on your WYSIWYG editor are in the same order as if you would edit on a different content type. Because in Drupal you can configure pretty much everything with the CK editor layouts and um, features. And uh, it has to be compatible. So if the button just has an icon on it, there should be a label on it. And if, it's, uh, if you're building your own WYSIWYG editor or if you're taking one off the shelf, uh, making sure that it complies with uh, name, role, value, um, accessibility standards. So let's look at some different WYSIWYG editors. So I've picked uh, five, uh, most started on GitHub. Uh, they're actively maintained. Um, they are not markdown only, so some are very popular, but they're markdown only editors. Um, I'm looking at the accessibility statement of those um, editors. I'm looking at the issue queue, especially for accessibility issues, and doing a quick test, a automated test or a manual test. So the automated test, I usually use Wave plugin. There's many, many different plugins that you can use. Um, that's one of them that you just activate and it runs through the website and shows you where the potential issues might be. It doesn't catch everything, it just catches something that automated tool can catch. Um, and I also do the manual test with voiceover. If you have, um, for macOS, it's a built-in screen reader. Um, there are other screen readers on different operating systems. It's quite easy to enable from settings accessibility, turn it on, and your computer will speak to you. So, what are the most popular rich text editors? So, we've got a couple. So, this one is from Wapalizer. <laughs> um, so, Monaco and Ace, they are code editors. They are not uh, rich. They are rich text editors, but, but for code. So, they don't render HTML. Um, but all the other ones are uh, quite popular. So I just added a tip tap um, as a replacement for one of them. So these ones are um, uh, Quill, tip tap, Froella, TinyMC, and CK Editor 5. Um, I don't know if you've heard of any of those um, editors. So let's go with Quill. Anyone heard about Quill? Um, so Quill is actually quite popular. You probably use it every day. It's the Slack text editor, WYSIWYG and Slack, and also on LinkedIn. Here's a quick screenshot uh, from their website, which is, um, you know, how um, rich text editor looks like. It just looks like a text editor. <laughs> Um, and going through, it's very popular on GitHub, has quite a few million downloads. Um, the accessibility issue queue is very shallow. Uh, out of so many issues, they don't really um, look into many issues. Also, um, there is no accessibility statement on their particular website or in documentation. There is no keyboard short shortcuts into the toolbar. Um, so that's a quite questionable implementation. And when I ran the um, 
uh, Wave plugin on the website, it looks very sad in terms of it, the buttons don't have labels. So when you navigate it with the voiceover, it just says button. So it doesn't actually say what button does. Um, and also it doesn't have enough contrast on the by default implementation. Although when I ran the tool on uh, Slack or LinkedIn, it's actually um, accessible uh, because they obviously either fix that or they um, Slack or LinkedIn, they use their own implementation of the buttons. So next one is TipTap. Anyone heard of TipTap? So anyone's using Substack? Uh, a now popular blogger writer platform, so that's um, used um, on the Substack. So it just um, there are a um, couple of implementations where one can be dynamic, where you start typing and the toolbar shows up while you type. So it's also quite popular, uh, heavily downloaded. Also, with the accessibility issue, Q is very shallow. They're not really looking into it. And they do have documentation for accessibility on their website, um, which says we don't really have any accessibility focus at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, OK. <laughs> and when I did a RAN uh, Wave plugin on um, Substack, um, yeah, it's just even they didn't fully implement accessibility on their particular items. So it just doesn't have um, button labels, which is quite sad because it's, it's, it's a huge um, writer's platform. Um, and also on a voiceover test, um, uh, you don't see the buttons uh, labels. So the next one is Froella. Anyone heard of Froella? So this one is used in Salesforce. So yeah, the, it looks just like any um, other um, editor. And um, it's quite popular, not as popular as the other ones, because it's also a paid. Um, uh, editor, it's not just open, it's open source, but you have to get a license for it. Uh, accessibility issue queue is very shallow as well, um, but they do have a good documentation. Um, and I guess maybe they have, um, and even they ran through the compliance statement for American market um, with the 508 compliance. So that's their accessibility statement that they, you can uh, navigate with keyboard, you can do the shortcuts, and um, it's compliant to level 2.0. Well, but it don't take their specific um, uh, statement. Uh, take it with a grain of salt, basically. So you can see in this particular example, there's failing on uh, uh, it's a level um, of the guidelines. So when you're typing something and you selected the text and the text looks underlined and italic, um, the buttons actually just, the only way they indicate that those tools are selected is with the color. And if you use the black and white or if the person doesn't recognize the color changes, then uh, it doesn't say anything, so it should have at least a border around the, um, the button. So that would be a um, fail. It's a very minor issue, but it's not 100% compliant, as they say. And the big one, the TinyMC, it's used by WordPress, Shopify, Atlassian. So it's a very, very uh, big and popular one. Um, that's um, a quick screenshot of um, how it looks like. It's very um, flexible, very big, uh, quite uh, popular with 
quite a few accessibility issues and they're being moved uh, and worked on. Um, they are, um, because they are so, I guess, big and they have such uh, high profile clients, they do uh, have um, accessibility documentation, extra plugins for usability and accessibility, extra settings, uh, guidelines and keyboard shortcuts. Um, but yes, this one is also not a free um, uh, rich text editor. And we'll get to the CK Editor 5 now. Uh, so CK Editor 5, b besides being used for Drupal, is also used in Salesforce and Wix. Uh, so Wix is a little, um, it's a website building platform. Uh, here's a quick screenshot of the editor. And um, the new version was released uh, in 2018, already quite a few years ago. Um, it's quite popular. It has quite a few accessibility issues in the queue, and they are being processed um, as well. There is a good documentation for uh, keyboard shortcuts, uh, but it's actually missing documentation for accessibility support and compliance. But it has a but. Um, so in CK Editor 4, they did have a really good um, uh, accessibility um, guidelines 2.1 AA standard, and they addressed every single um, um, item on the list and how and the techniques they used. So it was uh, really, really com uh, comprehensive. So, and then um, CK Editor version 5, when I was looking through the queue, there was already someone saying, hey, where's the documentation? And I just plussed one it, and someone from the team replied, yeah, it's coming, just wait a minute, <laughs> we'll, we'll fix in it. So in a couple of months, maybe they'll uh, release a full-on um, accessibility compliance report. And uh, they have a pretty good uh, track record of um, accessibility uh, releases or accessibility issues being fixed and released and documented. So that's, um, that's not the full list for May 22 release. Uh, that's uh, August 22. There is even more accessibility fish, uh, issue fix. Um, this is the latest release in March. Now they have um, introduced the accessibility help dialogue. So it's an extra little tool that a uh, user can call in and they'll see all the uh, shortcuts specifically for their operating system, if they're on Mac or on Windows. Um, and this particular issue has been already, this particular release of CK Editor is already on Drupal 10 or Drupal 11 branch. So it will be um, released in the next um, uh, minor release of Drupal. Or you can just uh, get the patch from the core. So if we go back to Drupal and accessibility, uh, this is one of the um, big major focuses of uh, Drupal. Uh, there is uh, really comprehensive documentation on Drupal, um, Drupal.org website about accessibility and commitment to comply. Um, there is uh, all, all the bugs are being tracked. There is a lot of fixed bugs a lot of active issues still in the queue. Um, there is also an interesting feature uh, as accessibility office hours. So if you have a couple of questions to ask um, professionals in, um, uh, in America or anyone in the Drupal.org, they run two months, uh, every two months they run meetings where you can actually ask questions and uh, show your project and they will recommend how you can overcome any issues that you might have. And there is also coding standards and best practices for developers. How can you um, create the best accessible um, controls? So I ran a quick test on the uh, CK Editor 5 in Drupal because every imp implementation is different. 
and maybe a CK editor by itself is really good, but in Drupal it might have some issues. And there are a couple of issues, of course. So first one is use of color again. So uh, this is just to indicate that something is selected is just slight change of color. Um, and there is a issue for that and it has been fixed and now it's already merged into the core. Um, so next minor release, we might actually get um, of Drupal, you will get this uh, functionality, this fix. The next one uh, I had to do with the voiceover. So when you have your uh, voiceover on, it reads out all the labels on the form fields and it tells you what sort of which um, field you're modifying, which field you're editing. And with, uh, Wizy, we, with CK Editor 5, it just reads out Editor Editing Area Main. I don't know, I have like a dozen of uh, WYSIWYG editors <laughs> on the page in this particular. <laughs> so for the user who needs to actually know on which particular um, field they're on, it will be a bit problematic. And uh, there is an issue in the issue queue for CK Editor for this particular item because they don't set the area label to the um, to the label of the field. It was there for CK Editor 4. And uh, there is a Drupal core issue to uh, just say, hey, I have this label just pasted into the CK Editor. So after that, if you apply this patch, you will um, actually get the proper uh, text label for the um, CK Editor. So, another issue fixed. Uh, anyone knows what the magic keyboard shortcut to CK Editor toolbar is? <laughs> and where do you find out that? Um, so, when you um, enable it, there is like documentation from the um, Drupal core, um, from the modules. So, not very accessible. Um, so, uh, why not um, just have it under, um, just there where you've got your CK editor so that you can see that there is a help available. Just make it as a, a configurable, um, um, configurable text. So, TinyMC, for example, has it on the um, default configuration as well, so that you can have it um, as a quick help. And um, there are a couple of extra modules that you can install for CK Editor 5 for Drupal to make the uh, editing experience better and better accessibility. So there is a CK Editor abbreviation just to create more um, semantic tags um, to your um, CK Editor. Editor advanced link where you can add extra attributes to the links, open a new window or um, a title if it's um, an image uh, link, for example. Interesting one, find and replace. So in particular, um, editor, you can click find and replace and it will just replace everything. You can't really do it with the, within the browser. And also a CK editor word count. So it will show you how many words, how many characters are in your um, editing. And um, you can build the accessibility into your plugins. So just use area labels, uh, don't just use uh, color to indicate uh, features or functionalities or states, and always test keyboard navigation. And accessibility by design. So this is a really quick um, guide on how to um, build the accessibility into your uh, workflow, into your development and design. So when you, you start a new project in the discovery stage, uh, find and define what's the level of compliance, which tools, which environments you will be using, and uh, train uh, accessibility specialist champion in your team. 
in the design stage, make sure your designers and UX specialists know the uh, accessibility guideline levels, especially uh, adaptable, use of color, uh, contrast, uh, hover and focus state, and visible focus. Uh, lots of designers think that like, oh, underline is not beautiful, or um, outline when on focus is not beautiful, so they uh, remove those. And this is something really easy to fix um, during the um, design stage. And adaptable is how does it look on mobile? How does it look on desktop? Just um, it, you, the design needs to be uh, described. And once those things are solved, the developers don't have to go back to designers and say, hey, this color is not proper contrast, which shade of yellow should they use instead? <laughs> In the development stage, um, educate developers about accessibility levels. Um, add that to definition of done. So color, keyboard, um, focus. Uh, perform accessibility testing on different platforms with lots of different tools. And develop accessibility policy. So lots of companies um, or lots of government organizations do have accessibility policies. So it's basically just what's your level of compliance, what's your commitment, um, and any contact details so that if anyone who has any issues might contact you and say, hey, there's something I can't do with or use on your website, can you fix it so that you can actually address the issue? And in the development stage, there are a couple of um, um, Drupal uh, modules that you can have a look at and see if you um, would like to implement them. So that's um, a thematic alternative text, um, which uses AI. Um, so you need to subscribe to some sort of service. Uh, block area landmark roles. So if you have blocks, um, if you use blocks, you can actually set the role on the block. So if it's a role search or role article or sidebar, um, and there is also keyboard shortcuts, um, Drupal module where you can press Command S and it will save. Um, And at go live, um, just you will be pretty much set to go live. Um, just do your final compliance reports and publish your accessibility policy. So to recap, uh, we've got quick wins. When you design and develop, keep in mind color, keyboard, name, role, value, just making sure Labels are there, you can navigate with keyboard, and the colors are there. Simple. Yeah, so during this presentation, there were two Drupal core issues fixed, two Drupal core issues reported, two CK Editor 5 issues updated, accessibility documentation updated for Drupal, and no animals were harmed. <laughs> and if you got any questions, ask away. And all the resources uh, from this presentation are available on this um, GitLab uh, help page. Good hustle. <laughs>